It's a beautiful day and we're out for a hike along the Salt River in Arizona. And we brought along some of the questions that we've been getting from comments through our videos, as well as email, and also from people that we just run into. So we're gonna try to answer those. And if we don't get to your question, be sure to leave it in the comments below so that we can answer it in a future video. One repeat question that we get over and over again is, is our rig too big? And the other one is, is it, is too, it small? too small? So some yeah. people are concerned that maybe it's too small to, to live in and other people, I guess, are concerned that it's too big to maneuver to around maneuver, or to get right. into certain parks and things like that. It, it is it is a big rig. It's 40 feet and we have a long bed truck. So we do have quite a bit of length there. And in some cases, yes, it's too big, but not very often. We ran into some campgrounds in California along the coast that do have some length restrictions, but we were easily able to overcome that by just going inland a little bit to a larger campground and then just doing day trips out. Yeah, unfortunately, the places that didn't allow the larger rigs weren't actually places that we <laughs> decided that yeah. we really wanted to go to anyway, yeah. so it worked out even better because there was a lot better places around those that did allow uh, larger rigs. And I guess it's a little bit challenging sometimes, like if we're going to go into a town to get fuel or something like that to pull off of a highway. But we usually just make sure by looking at satellite imagery or something that we, you know, to make sure that we can get in and out of there very easily. And sometimes we'll go on tips that we've got from other people that drive, uh, have similar rigs, uh -huh. similar size length rigs. And so I, I guess I, I would say it's, it's really not that much of, of a problem overall. But. No, I, I, I think it's it's just about right because it's it's nice to have the room when you're stopped and it's if you do a little planning it's not really a problem when you're traveling. Yeah and several more feet I mean you, you've got to be careful whether it's 20 or 40 <laughs> feet you got to just make sure that you can you know, turn and back in and maneuver where you need to. And it, it really isn't that much more difficult. I, I'd say probably the most challenging thing would probably be just making sure when, when you're, you know, backing in that you've got space to do so because it's going to take a little bit more uh, time to make uh, adjustments and yeah, stuff. But sure. as far as it being too small, <laughs> Um, I, I guess most people are wondering if it's too small being cramped inside yeah. and things like that. I'd say every once in a while uh, it, it kind of feels that way when I have gear out or something or mm -hmm. camera equipment or different things that I want to use. Uh, it, I have to leave it laying around sometime <laughs> or put it away and if I put it away then it's in front of things and, and stuff like that. So it, it can be a little bit challenging in that regard sometimes but um, I, you know you just you just deal with it like yeah. any other thing that you deal with in life. You know if your car's too small you make it fit <laughs> somehow you know or whatever you just kind of adjust. So I don't think that that's much of a problem. We've mentioned before that it's not that big of a deal with you know the dog and us because the yeah. dog's under our feet whether we're in a mansion or a, <laughs> right. a tiny house so be in 10,000 square feet and he'd still be right there next yeah, to you so. so so that's not that big can you think of anything else that would be uh, dealing with as far as it being too small mm -hmm. i don't i don't know no, can't really i i, I think it's just have, you know you yeah. just make adjustments i yeah. i think with most things you just learn to adapt to it you make adjustments and 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 it's not that big of an issue anymore yeah and if it is then you're just gonna have to make a change if it's a right. constant and, issue and as we have also said in another video we it makes us keep the amount of stuff that we have to a minimum which we like to do and since we don't have space to get more stuff it helps keep me from getting more stuff <laughs> yeah for sure so another question is is it difficult to back in a 40 foot fifth wheel into a space mm -hmm. and I kind of touched on this a little bit but it it definitely takes a little bit more time than a small one uh, in terms of making adjustments you need a little bit more space I should say yeah. to, to make the adjustments I guess how, how would you say it takes a little bit longer to, little bit longer. to make you, the adjustment to, to get into something. When you're looking at sites you want to make sure that there's room in front of you because you're going to need to be pulling forward to make those adjustments. So if there's 
you know, a tree right in front of you, that might not be a spot that you want because you're not going to be able to pull forward to make your adjustments. Yeah, certainly site selection is paramount. Uh, I pay close attention to that. But I'd say overall, you know, you, you get you get used to it. I've had a couple rigs before this. Um, I, I wouldn't say that like I'm a, a, a major expert. I do very well. Most of the <laughs> sites <do> <laughs> that I pull into are, are back ends. I, uh -huh. I'd say the overwhelming yeah, majority sure. of what we've done. We've had a few pull throughs. Those are nice when <laughs> we're on the open road and I, I don't want to unhitch and all that kind of stuff. But overall, I, I do back them in. I found that it's easier if you make slight adjustments. Don't make radical, uh, you know, turns and things mm -hmm. like that with the wheel unless unless you really have to uh, just try to do it slow and easy and steady and don't worry about people around you in the park yeah. or other people what they're saying they're they're not driving you're yeah. driving so you just do your own they thing always and always uh, want to give you advice <laughs> yeah and one of the things that I, I let Susan off the hook immediately when we got this I said look you know you're off the hook I don't want to be that guy in the park you know complaining to his wife that she's not doing something right when she's not even in the driver's seat so <laughs> I just ask Susan, let me know if I'm going to run over a picnic table or <laughs> something like that, some or big the obstruction. Box or something. Yeah, those kinds of things. Just let me know if something's happening that I wasn't planning on. Yeah, and, and otherwise, and I just do it myself and it works and out. And different rigs are different. Motorhomes backing in is very different than a, a fifth wheel or a travel trailer. And it took me a, quite a few times of watching him back in to kind of understand with the fifth wheel. Um, which way you're turning or which way you need to make an adjustment and it didn't really make logical sense to me at first but now I've you know watched it enough times that I understand which way he's going to need to make an adjustment to get us to where we want to be in the site so that is definitely a learning yeah. curve there. <laughs> I'd say you know just keep a cool head do it calm don't worry about what other people are doing just focus on what you're doing and slow and easy and uh, you know, just make sure you pick good sites that look like you're gonna be able to, to handle getting in and out of. And for the most part, it, it works out just great. We've been in some that have been really, really tight. I felt like I was playing Tetris or something, trying to <laughs> move into that spot, but it, it, it works out, you know, and it, it's just, you know, with any, you know, practice with anything, you know, helps a great deal, so. Yeah, and if you're uh, able to get one to where when you're backing in, the driver's side is the way that you're turning. That helps a little bit because you can see better if you're having to turn in from the opposite direction and you can't see the back of the trailer, then that gets to be a little more difficult. Yeah, that helps a lot if you're making the turn from the driver's side so that you can look down the driver's side and see the angle of the trailer and, and know where you're putting it a lot easier than, than the other side. But, uh, you know, some people have even tried walkie-talkies and things like that. We we have a set of those. I think we tried it once, once. and, <laughs> and it, I don't even know if Susan had hers on or if she was pushing the button or not, but, you know, I uh, afterwards I said, oh, I didn't even know you were talking to me. So we, we kind of scrapped that. It, yeah. it doesn't work. I mean, it, it just works fine. That Susan usually gets out and makes sure that, you know, uh, you know, there's nothing that I'm going to bump into back there. And, and I also do that too. I get out and I'll walk around, make sure what I'm backing up to. And I might even make an adjustment here and there as I'm uh, backing in and, and have a look around and, and make sure I'm going where I, I think I am. But yeah, just slow and easy. Yep. You do a great job. Oh, thanks. <laughs> so another question that's also related to the truck or the RV is what kind of fuel mileage do you get? Well, we have a diesel truck, and we did a video on that that you can check out. But I'd say probably when towing, we've been getting what, about 12, I think 13 has been about, about the, the best, best, but probably yeah. averaging around 12 yeah. miles per gallon. And that's towing, and, and mostly we've been in western mountains and, yeah, some, and some, mountains, flat, some flat, you know, so it's just kind of a mixture. And uh, without, um, that's going to range anywhere from probably on the low end has been 17 like in just stop and go yeah. traffic constantly like when we're in a city or something that it, it could get as low as 17 miles per gallon and I think probably the best when we've done a lot of highway miles without the RVs probably what 21? 22 mm -hmm. yeah, maybe maybe, maybe as high as 22, 22 but yeah. I'd say 
maybe average 21 I don't yeah. know somewhere in there but anyway it's it's it it's not great but no. it's definitely a lot better than I thought I thought yeah. we'd be getting like between five and eight towing yeah. and stuff like that but we try to keep things as light as possible and well within the specs and standards so so yeah it's, that's pretty it's good. definitely not as bad as as we thought that it might be yeah another question that we get a lot is do we miss having a stationary house <laughs> mm. uh, I guess there's things that I miss about it but not enough to sway me at this point I mean yeah. we've been doing this for a couple years uh, full-time and I would say that there there are little things that I miss about it but again not anything to make me go running back to that and in the future if we want to go back to that type of thing that we can but even at that I would probably see it still involving as much travel as we could get into it like have yeah. maybe a smaller, smaller vehicle and head out of yeah, it and, and come back to it as a, as a base camp type yeah. of thing but um, I there are things I mean I miss rooms that I have that are dedicated to, to certain you know <laughs> hobbies of mine or projects that I'm working on that I can just go in there and everything's still set up that I don't have to stow everything like I do uh, now but again it's if I were in a stationary uh, house or apartment or cabin or mm. dining house or anything like that that's gonna be you know just staying stationary for a while I think I would be really antsy to want it to move yeah. you know I just yeah. I would want to just hook it up and take it somewhere with right. me so at this point yeah. we're we're wanting to be able to move uh, and that is kind of overweighing the the desire to have a stationary house because if you have a stationary house then if you're gone all the time then you need somebody to take care of it or watch over it or something and it just seems like it's it's a much better fit to be able to take it with us <laughs> Yeah, and I don't really need to feel like I, I own that somewhere at this point in my life that I just have this huge, uh, I don't know, responsibility or whatever yeah. you want to call it. Uh, you know, think of something positive and fill in the blank, you yeah. know, but uh, it's, it's just not something that I, I think that I miss I mean sure there's things I mean I've got a lot of memories you know over the years uh, in, in, in from our house and but those are all memories I'm not going to reconstruct those at this point yeah. in life so you know we're making other memories now and right. it, it really is I I don't think life has to be so rigid and so defined like you do one thing or live one way uh -huh. your, your entire life as, as long as you're being good to other people and taking care of yourself and, and, and doing what's right for your family and everything, you know, go for it. Make, yeah, make the best of it. Try different, different lifestyles and different ways of looking at things. Like you said, it doesn't have to be the, the way that, you know, it's been in the past or the way your parents did it or their parents or whatever. There's lots of different lifestyles and ways to live. So, I think it's it's good yeah. to try different things. Yeah, for now this is fun. If it stops being fun, we'll try <laughs> we'll to stop doing do it, something that's more fun if we can. <laughs> Another big question that's been coming up a lot is how did Susan lose all her <laughs> weight? You know, and uh, I mean it wasn't like she was catastrophically big or anything, but <laughs> felt you know, like it. But. Yeah, well she's she's lost a lot of weight, and it, it's it's very inspirational to me, and and I I'm just so proud of her it's just uh, amazing accomplishment that that she's done and it's something that she wanted to do so that makes it even even better you know it just makes it so great so one, I mean I know we did a video about this an entire yeah. video about it if you want to hear every bit about it yeah. check out the video on Susan's weight loss but if you want to just say something in a basically, nutshell basically I got a Fitbit fitness tracker and started using that um, regularly and making sure that I was walking at least my 10,000 steps every day and paying attention to and keeping track of what I ate and like you said there's a whole video um, that I talked uh, completely about the Fitbit and how I used it and, and how it helped me and so please check that out and get yeah. all those answers yeah, there. <laughs> definitely have a look at that you'll hear all about it and if you have any questions after that ask them in this video and we'll try to get to those in our next uh, question and answer video yep we're also asked a lot if we're retired and um, 
Well, I'd like to think I'll never be, but you know how that goes. I mean, life can deal us anything it wants to, but uh, no, we're not. Nope. <laughs> and we still have to make a living. And uh, so um, we're, we're not free and clear of, <laughs> of that burden by any stretch, you know, but we try not to make it a burden as much as possible. And part of that's by doing this lifestyle, trying to, um, I guess, uh, enjoy life as we go, uh, rather than put off enjoyment for the for future when we right. may or may not, may not be, able be able to, able to enjoy to it at that point. <laughs> So uh, anyway, uh, so that uh, that's uh, how we do make money on the road is a much more involved question, well, and we involved. plan to do a complete video on just that topic. Yeah, we want to make sure that we go into it more thoroughly than we can do in this video. So we'll just kind of do a separate video on that topic alone that has to do with uh, work and financial things and stuff like that. Um, and another thing is, along, is the you know, camera, camera equipment. equipment is another big one yeah, that we're big question. ask. Uh, well, I, I don't know if it's 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 not really like a big issue that people bring up, but it has been brought up several, several times. times. So yeah. we want to do a separate video on that too, and we're just going to basically show you everything that we use and how we use it and all that kind of stuff. And you know, hopefully that'll be of some use to you, but that'll also come up in a future video. Yep. And I'm eager to do it, so yes. it should be not too, <laughs> not too long far from now. Off, we yeah. really do want to share these things, so it, it'll be fun. Another big thing that people like to know about is what's our favorite place that we've visited or gone. Well, we've pretty much been covering west of the Rockies so far in the, the lower 48. And I've actually been to all of the lower 48. And... Uh, I can say for me personally, I would have to say Oregon is probably my favorite all overall location. Now there's other things that we've seen that I really like, like Zion <laughs> National Park. Oh my God, that yeah. is, is so beautiful there. And there's several other national parks there in uh, Utah that are great. We've been to Yellowstone, things like that. You know, there's so many things. It's so hard to say what's a favorite, but if I had to pick a favorite overall location, it would definitely be Oregon. I can almost find a little bit of everything that I've seen anywhere else in Oregon. I've got the yeah. Pacific Ocean, the coast, the Coast Range Mountains. We got the Willamette Valley, which is a lush, just really fertile valley that goes the length of, uh, of Oregon in between two mountain ranges. And the Cascades being another just wonderful thing about Oregon. The high Cascade Mountains, the volcanic mountains, they're just absolutely gorgeous. And then it's even got the desert and some of the uh -huh. rock mountains like that you get in the southwest, things like that in the eastern part of Oregon. And then in the, what, the northeast corner of Oregon, there's the Wallawas, which have been called like the Oregon Alps. <laughs> and it, you know, and then you got the Columbia River Gorge. Check out some of our videos that we've yeah. made on like the Columbia River Gorge, Oregon Coast, Oregon Coast you know, yeah. around Oregon. It's just absolutely stunning. I mean, yeah, there's a, there's rain there that people talk about. That's why you get all the greenery and all the you know, beautiful forests and all the waterfalls and the rivers and the streams and the lakes and all the berries. I mean, anywhere that I walk there, I can make a salad, you know, or just, I mean, it's just amazing uh, place. It's just absolutely stunning and beautiful all around that state. I love it. There are things that you have to put up with, with there if you stay there all the time, yeah. but hey, we can leave for, uh, you know, through the rain and the cold if we choose, but we've spent time through the rain and the cold there. I've said on other videos, no matter where you live in the United States, you know, the lower 48, you're going to have to put up with probably six months of something, yeah. whether it's humidity, wind, rain, yeah. intense heat. So yeah, living in the RV makes it so that we can leave there <laughs> when it's that bad and we can come back when it's the nice weather and it, Oregon is definitely a extremely beautiful state and it does have a little bit of everything. I'd What's have your to favorite? say <laughs> I'd have to say as far as beauty that definitely Oregon um, the oh, the thing that of course draws me to Arizona is just the weather in the winter time and the family that we have here of course that that makes it a favorite no matter how ugly it would be that it would be a favorite just because of the family but as yeah. far as as just favorite place to be it would definitely be Oregon yeah. and 
then Zion again is yeah, just, it's stunning. just absolutely it, took my breath away. You can't take away. a bad picture there. I mean, no, every direction you look amazing. in is amazing. Loved it's just majestic it. <laughs> yeah. is, is the word I would use. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, it, it you can find beauty everywhere that you, you go. I mean, it's what you make out of it. And and you just try to make the best of it at different places but i mean you know if we're if we're if we're pressed and you could see how hard it was for me to say Oregon, but yeah. no i just i absolutely love it up there the pacific northwest is gorgeous and again you have to put up with something wherever you go so yeah. you just try to make the best of it best of it and i Oregon for me and yep. <laughs> Oregon for you and, and all the other places are great you know that that we go but yeah, that, that every place one. has its special kind of beauty for sure yeah if we didn't answer your question in this video, please be sure to leave it in the comments below. And as a reminder, we will be doing a video in the future on work and finances as well as one on camera equipment. So no need to ask about those in the comments, but those questions that you do ask in the comments will be answered in upcoming videos. So please remember to comment, share, and subscribe. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching.